at this point, I've become his mother. <laughs> I've strong family. I've <laughs> well, so, so is this uh, born last night? Yeah, yeah, born about um, eleven o'clock. And there were two born. Mm -hmm. And yeah. th this one was rejected by the mother. Yeah. Yeah, this one was born outside. Um, I went when I was feeding the sheep last night after class. I went in there and she didn't come in, and she was kind of going back and forth. And you knew something was up, and then you heard the baby crying. So he's laying out there in the mud. It's cold. So you pick him up, dry him off, and I took him back down there, but she hit him. So that's just going to kill him. So at this point, you make up your mind: Are you going to take care of him, or are you going to let him go? He didn't ask to be born, so I decided it would be okay. I'm going to hate it if there's any more, though. There's one down there probably going to have triplets. And so the last thing I want... Them all, though. Pardon? She might. She might. she might. she might. But if you have animals, you have to be prepared for whatever comes along. So some of those decisions are kind of hard. Believe me, this is time. <laughs> A lot of time. Labor intense. So what you're saying is you had a good night's sleep last night. Oh, right. I had a wonderful night. I was tired before the sheep came. <laughs> it's really tired. Now, last week, I did a lesson about keeping the value of a dog. So many people get dogs of equal value and then don't do the necessary things to keep the value. And then you end up with having to fix the, the, the problems in that dog. So today, instead of $20 bills, we actually have dogs that kind of are um, examples of those, those $20, the different $20 bills. Zachy, hey. So, good boy. Now, here... Right here, we have Hunter. Hunter's a handsome young man, a little over a year old. He came from a good breeder. He had all the best things. Because he was a beautiful dog, he was put up on that pedestal, and he was raised to be a show dog. They celebrated, you know, the fact that he was pretty, he moves pretty, He's happy, he's confident, and he's full of himself. The problem with it is, just like that $20 bill, when he came off the pedestal and he went into a, a home, he had not been prepared to be useful. So a handler had him and was showing him, and he would go out there and show like a million bucks. When an older couple bought him, he came off the show circuit and he went in to live with some retired older people. Didn't go so well. They were looking for a pet. His job description was to take over the world. Didn't last long. He went back. So he was fired from his first job. How does he go to the next one? He's got some crinkles in him. Otis over here is not quite the epitome of that dog that's protected from everything because Julie does come to class. So we do rip him out of her arms periodically and force Julie to sit away from him. Julie doesn't like to sit away from him. <laughs> But this is Tracy, who would like to keep the dog right here. The problem with it is, unless you add some experiences, this thing is needy and dependent because it doesn't know what to do. So, bless Julie's heart. She really is trying to do right by Otis, and she actually is. Oh, you don't know. Over here we have Harry. Good boy. 
Y. Good boy. Harry is the dog that was raised by, in a situation like Kathy, where he had all the garbage on him, he'd been stepped on, now not literally, but he had baggage, he'd been handled improperly, he'd been thrown into situations he wasn't prepared for, there was no way he could succeed. So Harry started in Texas, went to New York, came here for training, that's the only thing that saved him, went back to New York, after years went back to Texas, went to Denver, went to Minnesota, came here. He's had an overnight with a very nice couple who didn't bargain for a dog with baggage. They're very nice people. But they didn't, they really wanted an older dog that was already trained. Well, they learned that whether it's a puppy or whether it's an adult, unless you get those wrinkles out of that dog, you got problems. The only saving grace to this dog is that he, start, he came here for training as a, as a young dog. And he is very well trained. But at this point, because he's lost, what was that, eight or nine jobs? How would you feel if you lost eight or nine jobs? Pretty defeated. Our job is to teach this dog to be adaptable and not fear losing me because I've been one of the only trustworthy people in his life, except his breeder. So this dog simply needs to have the ability to relax and make a very gradual transition into a new home. He's very well trained. He knows his job. But he doesn't trust people. So Harry is trained. He's a wonderful dog. He, he's, a good, he's good on the lead. He's good with other dogs. He's a really wonderful dog. Except for, he doesn't like to be left. He's afraid he's being abandoned every time you leave him. That's, that's just desensitizing. And he needs the luxury of having it happen over a period of time rather than, poof, he goes into a new home. He can't do that. And the beauty of it is it, you, you can do it if you've got the ability to have the people that are going to get the dog be here on a regular basis, get acquainted with him gradually. I become less important, they become more important, and the dog makes the transition and he's fine. But there's no long distance for him. The nice thing is he can always come back here and restart. He comes back home. This is home to him. Over here, we have Zach. Now, <clears throat> Zach's breeder last year, he's about a year old, just a few months younger than Hunter. Um, last year, his breeder called me and she said, my husband's a veteran, my son's in the service, I would like to, to have, so give you one of my dogs to be a service dog eventually for a veteran. And I thanked her. She even delivered the dog up here. Which, I mean, that says something about the person. She doesn't show, but she loves the breed. Okay, no problem. Good boy. Now, we're going to look at the dog, though. I'm not pretty today. I haven't any sleep. All right. Now, Zach is a little over a year old, and he's a dog that I've been criticized for the way I'm handling it. I don't care. All right. His breeder, I'm sure, has been wondering why there haven't been pictures of him since he first came. Nobody's heard much about him. I didn't write anything about him. It's because he was growing up kind of like Tom Sawyer. 
He was having experiences, but he didn't go to school. I guess that's how thin, isn't it? He was being conditioned to observe, not participate. If we would have put pictures of him on here, it would have been tied to dumbbells. It would have been out with dogs that corrected him. Hey, you're fine. Easy. Good boy. He plays with other dogs just fine. He was a ratty little mess. He still isn't groomed beautiful. He's good to handle. He's now been neutered. And he's now ready for an education. The beauty of waiting with him is he's mature enough mentally and physically that he can take a correction and not wilt from it. When we start with a young dog, if we correct them, they lose show attitude. So what do we do with a dog like Hunter? We don't correct them. We want them to have attitude. A dog like Harry got corrected too much, not here, but in his home, it was inconsistent, and it was too much for Harry. So Harry worries about making mistakes. Zach understands what it's like to be working in the mail room, working your way on up to head of the department. He's never going to run the company. But he knows how to be appropriate with dogs below him and with dogs above him. Now, if this weight was near the outside, that wouldn't be moving around. But if you think about a survivor, how many people would want to be laying down in the middle of the floor and your back exposed. That wouldn't be safe, would it? So as a survivor mentality, he said, this is stupid to be out here in the middle of this floor. He's used to being on the outside where a smart guy belongs. Good boy. He's had zero training. He is, however, good to handle. You can cut his toenails. You can trim him. You can... He was so sweet at the vet. He trusts people. You can handle him all over. Easy. Hi, oh, look at you. Oh, he's got nice teeth. He's got very nice ears. He's got very nice feet. He has very nice feet. He's a whoop. He bumped into my finger. I know it's touchy under there, isn't it? He was just neutered. Good boy. What do you think? You got a nice butt? You do have a nice butt. Good boy. He's not the least bit touchy about anything. Hey. Yeah, I know. That was play, wasn't it? I need to fix this because I, I don't want him walking. I know. He's cleaning the crate. He's quite a nice dog. One day he is going to make somebody a fantastic dog. Now stop. I know. You're crazy. You're a crazy one. Easy. 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 Good. Easy. Now, there's people that laugh when a dog struggles like that. Easy. Easy. Good. Easy. This is conditioning that conditions this dog, or this, it, it brings that dog down so that it stops the busyness. I will not tolerate a dog that cannot be tied and be calm. That doesn't hurt him. So if he continues to be silly, that darn chain chases it. 
He knows the rules. Don't you, Zach? Somebody's silly person tied him out there in the middle of the floor. Now we look over here at Mr. Harry. He came from a very good breeder. Good show dogs. Lots of champions. Harry, too. No problem. Oh, what a nice black you have. That's a little bit of a problem. Hello, you. Hi, Hunter. Hi. Oh, look at your nice teeth. Oh, what a good dog. Oh, I know you love me. You have a nice butt, too. So all three of these dogs are good for handling. That's one. All three of these dogs are calm. That's the second part. All three of these dogs are respectful of a leaf. That leaves just training. Unfortunately, in these two that came from the show lines, there's baggage. There's thinking you can dominate every other dog you see. There's fear of not trusting people. Fear of abandonment. Fear of, you know, there's depression. These are all symptoms of PTSD in dogs and people. So in these two, we've got baggage to clean off. In this one, we have only friends. So he's an innocent, much like a baby puppy. Hi. I know. It's terrible, isn't it? Easy. You're fine. Good job. Good. Now, when we do a temperament assessment, I gotta get this subtle first. Now, this is such an awesome puppy. He is going to have absolutely no accidental lessons. Not if I can help it. Because I am not going to let him get anything programmed in that isn't useful. So therefore, good boy. Now when we do a temperament assessment, the worst thing we can do is turn that dog loose and see what it does. Okay? We can turn them loose. What happens if they get into a great big fight with somebody? You need them. Oh, you need them, wouldn't you? So a temperament assessment is best done with the dog confined, able to make decisions, and you observe. So we have the puppy that's well adjusted, no baggage. We have the dog that's worried about being alone, and we have the dog that has been taught to run right in and deal with it. And we have the dog that has been protected some, but he's actually quite a well-adjusted dog these days. So he started out that way, but he's not quite the example, but that's okay. All right. Now. Everybody clap your hands right now. Easy. Good boy. Easy. It's not what the dog does, it's how you react to it that makes the difference. Did you see that puppy react? And then when I said easy, he came down. That's what you're looking for. Just like with us, there are going to be things that surprise us in our lives. And if we go off on a, you know, just on a rant, okay, that means we're reactive, it sets us off, we're unstable, and you aren't worthy of leadership responsibilities. A leader reacts 
but then thinks about what to do. These two dogs have been conditioned. They've been here. Neither one of them are bad dogs. They did fine too. Alright. Come here, you. I know, you're going to be bait. This is prey. Look at here. Yep. Now that's a dog that quite possibly has been out in a backyard, fenced in backyard, that's been allowed to chase and possibly catch prey. This is a dog that's been around chihuahuas and dachshunds and been conditioned to be calm. The thing about Harry, he's never really been loose in a yard. He lived in New York City. He was walked with other dogs. So he doesn't have the drive. This one has drive. You can see it by looking at the dogs. Good boy, whatever your name is. I know. They're all curious. Very easy. You who? know what's going to happen. Look at here. Now, unhook her. Unhook her? Unhook her. Not from the wall. From your lead. This is a temperament assessment. This dog was raised in a kennel that shows a breeder, good breeder, who does a lot of hunting with her dogs. Look at the, look at the intensity on that dog's face. It's the lamb thing. I don't care. These dogs are bred to be on sheep farms in Scotland and England. Isn't that cute? It's not cute. So when we allow the dog to do what it wants to do, oh, I forgot you. choice. This is her choice. So when we're totally 
involved in the dog, it doesn't teach the dog anything. When we do this, because out of frustration, the dog will often just... make bad decisions, just like people do. They take out their frustration on, on the wrong person. Good. Until we can praise this dog, not for our training, but for our conditioning. Good girl, Maggie. She's not really learning. It becomes our responsibility instead of hers. In a service dog, in a good pet, in a dog that you want to do things with, that dog has got to be taught to make decisions, not you being there telling it what to do all the time. Now, these dogs out here are in the process of it. Who's doing this? I have no problem with, with Zach. This is a new experience. Remember, I said I've kept him kind of isolated more because I wanted no accidental lessons. This is now in the middle of the big time. He's showing me what he remembers of our conditioning. Harry is showing us what he remembers of his training. Hunter is actually doing very well because he too, Carolyn's been talking to him. Okay. okay. Why don't you park tuck down there? Now we're actually Wait. doing a temperament assessment of all the dogs at the same time. You're sitting too close to him to be a legitimate test. But you're looking at the dog and seeing, is that dog appropriate if you take the dog to the kids' baseball game or you go down and watch the parade? or you walk through the farmer's market and somebody's got bunnies, or into the pet store where there's little animals and little kids running around, or your grandkids come over to the house and start playing like children do. Which dog in here was worried? Yeah. Oh yeah. This intensity is, in some dogs, just a death sentence. It was in touch too, wasn't it, Carolyn? Yes, that was this in that. Yes, it was. Okay, pause. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job.
like you did, and then back away. Don't have him wait. drop in the middle. That will worry you. Just wait. No, no, you're going too far. Okay, drop him up right there. Stop. Now you're going to drop him right about when he gets to that line. That come. Easy. Don't worry about it. Wait. Wait. Actually, is a problem. Yup. And that's because Dale is walking her most of the time instead of this. Is that right? Yes. You can lead to people 
before they actually knew what to do. And for that, Maggie has gotten herself in trouble. She no, but we got the sheep in here. We've got activity in here, and you are hanging on to the lead. Okay, now, if Dale has the line on, and I'll put it on there. Good girl. This is fear. This is fear. If she lays down and that dog gets away, comes over here and jumps on her, she's dead. Now, Otis's escalation was not because of fear. His was he was going to protect Carolyn from that other dog. But that's going to get you in trouble too, isn't it? Thank you. Yeah. Good. All right, getting silly again. Hi, Tennis. You easy. Easy. Oh. Now this one. Videotape this one, Sega. Easy. Good job. Otis! Knock it off! Hey. Okay, that's good. Wait. Now, she wasn't happy, but she was manageable. That just says, hey, that just says she's only safe when you have that lead. She's not going to make good decisions on her own. That's all it says. Now, the, my test for whether a dog is tough or not is not by what it does. It never matters what the dog does. It only matters how you, how you react to it. I make my decision on whether a dog is salvageable or whether a dog, you know, how tough the dog is or if it's appropriate for a person based on how much effort it takes to have the dog come back down. All right, how much effort did it take with Zachy? None. I put a chain on him, okay. Look at her. She's got chain upon chain upon chain. How much effort did it take to get Harry to come down? Over here. None. He wants to please. How much effort did he get Chuck to come down? None. Because he was this. He was Maggie. He was worse than me. Yeah, he was. He was dangerous. He ripped her husband's hand open. He was fighting with other dogs. Knocking her, her daughter down. He's a scary guy. That's training. That's conditioning. He still has a problem with... Okay, on him. On your mark. Get set. Go. Quiet. Enough. Enough. Quiet. All Good. it takes is a trigger and that dog's back to being the dog. There's no... Carolyn can use him to teach service dog skills. She can, she can take him in as a demo. He's a wonderful reading dog because he's well trained. But that dog could not be placed as a service dog. He's a performance dog. Doing service dog tasks is just one of his performance. Many things. Yeah. How much effort did it take to bring Otis down? Very little. I told him to knock it off from across the room, and he did. See, that's what's so impressive about him. It doesn't matter what he does, it matters how you are. Now, how about Cooper? Darn, we haven't even heard his name today. He kind of laid there like a lump, didn't he? That's a dog that if Nancy says things are okay, things are okay. 
was a little worried about the land. Well, he was worried. He didn't yeah, and, and he doesn't understand it. But his reaction, Nancy, tells you how he deals with the unknown. He didn't have a problem. Okay. How about Hunter? How big a problem was he? Very little. Very little. He's been allowed to be a big fish in a very little pond, and he thinks he's much more entitled than he actually is. All he needs is an education. He, was, he went from one job to another, and he never was educated to do the job. He's a great dog. How about Miracle? Last week, she was kind of in between <laughs> Otis and Maggie. This week, she laid there like a doll because last week, she got the same treatment as Maggie. The difference with it is, Miracle is a very young puppy. It doesn't take much to change her. How old is Maggie? Three, years. three years old. Two and a half, actually. Oh, she was three. Okay, so she's three and a half. All right. So when a dog gets to be an adult... If we had over-the-top intensity in Harry, good luck with that. He's got a couple behaviors that need tweaking, but he's not a bad dog. Hunter, he's got a couple behaviors that need dealing with, but he's not a bad dog. Otis has got a couple behaviors that need... No, Julie has a couple behaviors that need dealing with, <laughs> but Otis is a great dog. So if Julie can step up and do what's necessary, she's got no problem at all. Eva is a normal Lakeland who has an opinion about everything. And as long as Sue does what's necessary, Diva's just fine. Now I want you to notice Diva being much like Kylie was. And that's you. That's you trying to help her. Knock it off is more important than trying to understand what she's afraid of and fixing it. She's playing you. Is that? I do a lot of that, though. Okay, good. Well, for some reason, she believes that's the way you get attention, and it probably works. All right. Now, this is not a negative about Maggie. Maggie's a very well-trained, happy little dog as long as the world's going her way. Unfortunately, she's more concerned with herself than she is with Dale. That is not a service dog, is it? Well, this situation is above and beyond. Now, this is why responsible owners say, this is kind of out of my hands. This is a juvenile delinquent that the parents can no longer deal with. This requires intervention if it's really going to be fixed. Now, I have a question for you. After she got a hold of my sheep, and I had my talk with her. She went back to you, a much more respectful young woman. But why is she back here then? Because it wasn't maintained. Okay? So we start taking them for granted. This is the problem with, we had some people here last night that they had gotten a service dog from another organization. There was not really any work um, between the people that trained the dog and the new people. They gave them a list of words that the dog knows and sent the dog home with them. Dog's trained. That was in November. At this point, the, kid, the dog is chasing the kids, biting them, jumping all over, growling at one of the owners. That is not a service dog. Supposedly, it's a seizure alert dog. Yeah, right. I said, how do you know if it's alerting for a seizure? 
I don't know. So unless you maintain that, it isn't going to stay sharp. Keep going. Now we always have to give the dog a way to... Maggie, easy. I said easy. You easy. Bring Chuck right over here, Carolyn. You easy. She's afraid to be vulnerable. Now don't get your butt to see. But get him all goofy. What's up? Good job. You easy. Good job. Good job. Oh, to snack it off. Now it's not enough to just do this. Okay, put him in a down right here by her. Down. Down. She's in a panic. Down. Good down. You down. Wait. Good down. Good wait. Good boy. Good boy. Easy. Good down. Good wait. This is caused by unresolved fears. The dog was put in situations where the fears were not resolved. Knock it off. Yeah. Okay, now come up and shake hands with me. Yeah, you can put a lead on him, Julie. You easy. Just run right up here. Easy. Easy. Wait. Hi there. Hello. Nice dog. She needs to see that you can control her. Because if you aren't stronger and smarter than she is, what does she need you for? Protection. She doesn't. Okay? And because you have a lifestyle that has already allowed some compromise, it, it would be a parent. You taught school. There's some parents that really need intervention to help that because the kid already doesn't respect. She likes you, but she doesn't look to you for security. When we go out with a service dog, it's much more than a dog that follows a treat around. I don't want a dog that follows a treat around. That dog better be paying more attention to security and safety than it ever does to food, fun, attention, and comfort. That dog, if I say to Z, I need you over here, I don't care if it's pouring down rain. That dog better get over there and be with me. Now, it's not, I don't specifically need a service dog, but I need her to act like I do so that it's an example for other people. That dog has to be courageous enough that if I go into a battle, meaning I don't like crowds, meaning I'm worried about, you know, I, I'm worried about how do I get out of this building, how do I, I have to show by example. I can't just tell somebody. That dog has got to be willing to go through the fire with me so that I can have enough confidence that I'm not going to be abandoned. Kind of like here. It's teamwork. It's a partner. It's not boss. It's having a relationship built on trust there's no way. You will not. Now this is somebody that's going to go off the deep end. This is not that soft little individual. It just needs a treat. Needs love. All you had is love. If you're a pet parent to this dog, you're in trouble. Thank you. Good dog. The beauty of the cue collar is, yeah, that looked rough. The beauty of the cue collar is, I'm not going to hurt her. The lead is loose. It's a correction and done. If you think this dog would go for a treat in place of killing that little lamb, 
You're crazy. Because her choice would be to kill that lamb. Okay. Now, you're going to get the lamb out. No. We have to work through all those unresolved fears. This started when this dog was a puppy. She heard a lot of dogs barking, but she didn't know how to deal with it. So every time there's a lot of barking, no, you're going to go over there where we've got space. Harry's getting real excited about that, too. Now, you easy. Good. So we have to tell her ahead of time, don't. You will not. Don't. You leave it more than just no, no, bad dog. This dog's going to kill something. This is the neighbor's chihuahua. This is the neighbor's pomeranian. This is the neighbor's grandchild who's walking around with fuzzy slippers or whatever. You, easy. Get up here. She can't avoid situations. Easy. Good dog. She doesn't have to like it. But she darn sure has to tolerate it. Good dog. Much nicer. Now the people that say you can train a dog with all positive, I'm sorry. No. It doesn't work that way. Not if we want to keep this little thing alive. Come on. Come on. Leave it. This is no different than walking through the grocery store, the meat aisle, and telling that dog to leave food alone. It's one of her priorities, one of her values. Or if somebody's across the room that has treats, she has no right to leave me to go seek attention from anybody else. She has no right to go into a room and tell me what's going to do. You don't do that to your leader. Good dog. She has to be given a way to earn praise. Good girl. And it's only with praise that she knows she's done it right. Because I'm darn sure going to tell her when she did it wrong. Good girl. Now this goes beyond conditioning. Zachy's being conditioned. Hunter's being conditioned. Harry's being conditioned. Otis is too. The rest of them are all being conditioned. She is being trained. So calmness and patience is when you're walking in the farmer's market and, and you have to go past the petting zoo. The neighbor kid's got a baby bunny. You can put that uh, and just Now just come over here. You leave it. Now it's very important that if she invades my personal space, it's none of her darn business. As the leader, or whatever your name is. You leave it. Come on. I may have to take... Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good dog. You can't avoid situations. You've got to desensitize this dog to those drives, to those fears, to triggers, or they never will get over it. This is PTSD. It's an unresolved fear that happened when she was a baby. She was never conditioned to enjoy being around other dogs. I wore sheep. I know, you're wonderful. You didn't know you were going to be a target sheep, did you? Good dog, Meg. Come on. Easy. Come on. Easy. Good. Leave it. Hey. Leave it. Leave it. Good. Isn't that cool? Isn't he cute? 
Easy. You, easy. Leave it. Good dog. Now, I would be irresponsible if I taught this sheep to like dogs. Because one day he's going to meet one that doesn't like him. Leave it. That's enough. All those things are commands. A lot of you who know, who've known me for a long time remember Jammer. He was a fantastic dog. Traveled all over with him. He was a great dog. Trained beautifully. He performed. When I finished with class, I would, he was out in an outside run. It was in the summertime. And so I'd take him in to feed him after class. And I'd flip the gate open and he'd go in and, okay. One night he runs over to this kitten. I said, Jammer, you leave it. We didn't want to leave it. But he did. Next night he killed the kitten. I wasn't there. That kitten did not have any fear of the dogs. Now, fact of life is, I believe Lakelands, Jack Russells, and those were on a farm, loose around the farm, and they kept the cats in the barn. And the dumb ones didn't. It's farm. I know. It's terrible, isn't it? They kept the sheep, too. Yeah. The funny thing of this is, Lakelands lived on sheep farms. And they were bred to coexist with sheep. But unless they're conditioned to coexist with sheep, they become prey. When we really think about it, prey drive and herding drive is very similar. There you go. It's the same drive with different outcomes. A herding dog herds all of the individuals together and pushes them. A prey-driven dog divides them, herds them, divides one individual out, and that one becomes lunch. But it's the same drive. Different purposes. Good dog, Meg. I don't care how frustrating she is. I don't care what she's done. When I have her on the lead, she's the best dog in the world. Good job, Maggie. So, I tell her very clearly what makes me happy, and I let her know what doesn't make me happy. In that way, she knows exactly what the job is. So when we have a, a new dog, a rescue dog, a dog that's been trained by somebody else, or moves to a new lifestyle, we have got to help that dog make a transition. Or we are doing a huge disservice. You're fine. Good girl. You're fine. I know. You were kind of dumb. You can't help it. This is how you need to be. In charge. So... You can't, a boss that's frazzled, nobody relaxes. Deep breath. But if you call her on you, because if we want the calmness in our dog, we also need to be calm. That dog is the reflection of how we are. That's why I know you're not doing a lot of this stuff at home. We can never take them for granted. If they start to slide, we go back to what we know, don't we, Nance? Good dog. This dog is so thankful. It's like in those old movies where the heroine's screaming and they're wet. Oh. She can't stop. She keeps escalating. She can't stop. There has to be a stop in that cycle. And then you can talk to them. Until that, you might as well hang it up. Good dog. So, anybody have any comments, questions? They're always interesting, even on video. They may not be on there, but anybody have any questions? You did very well. Well, you 
know he did. Now, as a protection dog, that dog was ready to protect Julie. He should. But he also came down. Cooper was paying attention. He didn't like it. But he stayed by your side. That's a service dog. Miracle. That's a service dog mentality where she puts your needs and desires ahead of her own. Last week, she wanted to just get involved. She'd have helped. She would be the perfect gang member because whatever the leader said, okay. Z, you're perfect, aren't you? Good dog. The boys all did great. I'm very pleased with them. This is how I do temperament testing. It's not what they do, it's how quick they come down. That's how hard they are to train. Got some pretty awesome dogs in here. Good girl, Meg. Come on.